This is Black Girl Thought Radio, radio, radio. Hi guys, welcome back to Black Girl Thought Radio. I am Annie Kant. I, I think I explained why I decided to do podcasts. It's just because the issues I want to dive into, it's much easier and much better for you guys to be able to listen, sort of, um, if you're on your way to work or if you're at the gym and things like that. Um, and the topics are um, not things that you can sort of fix in a quick, easy one, two, three step process. Um, and that's usually kind of more geared toward YouTube videos that can solve things quickly and easily. Um, so I am just going to present, um, some ideas in this podcast because I want to dive really deep into relationships because we need to understand where we've been and understand why we are where we are as far as the current sort of stance on relationships um, in the current position, which is divorce rates are over 50%. And I bring that up because that means that our traditional model isn't working, right? And I want to help you understand why you may have a difficult time finding relationships, why you have difficulty in these relationships, why what ideas you've been fed and taught that are really kind of like underlying and subconscious and I just want to help us get to a healthier place um, and help us be comfortable in our ability to choose the type of relationships that we want and we desire and help us to choose um, for ourselves as opposed to, I guess, doing what we've been told to do, which is pretty much my whole MO. So this podcast is really just going to be laying some groundwork, doing some foundational work. And because I know these topics will make a lot of people genuinely uncomfortable. And I want to let you guys know that I'm coming from a place of having been with many sugar daddies, some married, some divorced, some single. I literally have seen up close and personal what happens within these relationships. Um, when you're not sexually compatible, I've seen what happens when your life is a particular way and you actually sort of get this adrenaline rush from doing the wrong thing, which is having sex with other people. Um, And I've also had my fair share of relationships and my fair share of experiences. And I've also have sort of read the research and have sort of done the work to understand this topic. And obviously I'm continuing to grow and I'm going to do that with you guys, obviously, and inform you and whatever. So when you think of where I'm coming from, I want you to understand that I'm coming from a place that is pretty well-rounded, a place of studying race, class, gender, and sexuality, and then sort of being in a field where I get to see up close and personal how these relationships are playing out and why these men are unhappy in their marriages and things like that. Um, So number one, It is possible to live in a world where cheating doesn't exist, right? And when we think cheating, like for a lot of women, their worst fear is being cheated on. For me, that isn't my worst fear because I have no interest in keeping someone sort of hostage in what I would call a sexual prison, right? So oftentimes relationships are literally like uh, what it looks like. And I, and, and toxic monogamy is a term that's coming up that I absolutely adore because these ideas are extremely toxic, toxic in a way of they eat at you and, and they're, 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 they're just unhealthy. Um, so oftentimes in a relationship, what we teach is, and we have to understand this from an American historical perspective, when America was, was sort of founded and built, it was off of a Christian sort of premise right and Christianity has its own ideas of relationships and marriage and and oftentimes they're extremely sexist and um so when we're talking about relationships and marriage from that historical standpoint if you're in America your idea of relationships have has a certain look right and this is important because if you're based somewhere else and you're of a different faith and religion, then marriage looks different and the rules are different. So I'm talking from an American context, right? So from an American standpoint, we sort of were founded on the idea of Christianity and and using the Bible to kind of um, validate things that we did, even horrible things such as slavery. So 
um, then there were these sort of ideas of men and women and being different. And there's actually a reason why, there are many reasons why um, for women, sex was sort of like taboo. And it's like, no, no, sex is bad for women. Like, that's too much. She needs to do it with her husband. It's because they wanted to ensure who the father of the baby was, right? So that's one component, but that's a very important component. Like, I need to sort of know that these are my children. Like, so for women to have sex, it's more of a different issue, especially when there was no birth control and when things were a bit different, it's like, I need to know who's the father of these children. Like, um, and that's just one practical idea, but it's also just religious ideas of women are, are, are weak and need to be protected and they can't handle sex and all these things. So when we think of relationships and we think of marriage, right? It's oftentimes the woman is responsible for the household, right? The woman, if she's doing her job right, and her job is to take care of the home, her job is to make a really great atmosphere for this husband who's doing all the all this work and who's bringing home money and such, right? So it doesn't, it, it, it isn't completely illogical for a woman to feel like she has somehow failed if her partner, her husband is somehow seeking sort of companionship somewhere else or seeking sex somewhere else that literally translates to i have failed right so let me like make this practical and clear for you right now so historically and we're bringing this idea into the now which is why it's so bad and someone needs to talk about this right historically a woman's identity and validation was in her relationship, in her ability to maintain that relationship, right? So that meant that as a wife, I'm supposed to have sex with you. I'm supposed to do all the things in the home. I'm supposed to, like, this is my job. This is my identity. This is what I live for. Like, I literally live to have children. Like, back in the day, if a woman didn't have children, it was just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because your life had no other meaning other than having children. And sort of providing this comfort for your husband and and providing sex and, and keeping him happy, right? So now when someone in a relationship sort of has sex or they cheat, a lot of people have an identity crisis, right? And it's a problem to have an identity crisis because your identity is not your relationship. It used to be because it had to be because women literally could not survive without that relationship, right? So if I can't survive without this relationship, I need it. I need to make my husband happy. Like I need it, like I need it, need it, need it, right? Now, we don't have to say if my relationship fails and I have somehow failed. Whenever cheating takes place, there are a lot of people who are like, I don't even know who I am anymore. And and, and it's because they literally have placed their value in their partner pretending, and I say pretending deliberately because it's impossible for another human to live 50 years of life and never want to have sex with someone other than their person and for a lot of you that makes you uncomfortable and if it makes you uncomfortable the idea of your partner wanting sex with someone else it's because you've been taught to feel you've been conditioned to feel that i you have somehow failed if your partner wants to have sex with someone else right that's not true Because this idea of monogamy and one sexual partner is actually very new to humans. It's actually a very new concept. And when we think of marriage, historically in America, it was this economic agreement. It was just like, we need to sort of preserve the land and we need to sort of work as a family. And we, I need someone to leave my my house to. I need like, like there needs to be a legacy and, and marriage was women could not work and didn't have rights. So it's like, okay, cool. Like if you link up with this man then that's your that's your livelihood. So a woman not getting married back in the day was a big deal because she literally could not survive. She could be with her her parents, but what happens when her parents died, right? So that's why this is a very very big deal. If there was a family with brothers and sisters, probably when they died, the houses would be left to the brothers and the brothers would get married and then their wives would take care of the house. But the wife needed to move out and find her own husband who was getting inheriting a house, right? So I need you to understand that this has a historical context, right? What we're going through now, this is placed, this has, positionality means that this is the certain position we're in based on everything we've experienced, right? So Where we are currently in relationships, trying to uphold the same model, it does not work and it does not make sense. So toxic monogamy is, is this idea that everybody needs to do it the same way. This idea that 
everybody sort of needs to just have sex with one person for the rest of their life. And if your partner even expresses their desire to have sex with someone else, it's like, oh, my God, like I failed and and you're wrong. And that is that is not OK. Right. Because relationships aren't a sexual prison, period. Relationships aren't this space where you say and it's funny because a lot of people And a lot of men in particular think that their sex life is over once they get married. And that's a horrible idea because I know for me in particular, marriage to me means it's about to get fucking twacking because now we can go to swingers clubs and shit and swingers cruises and have all the benefits of what couples can do. And like, that's a different sort of fun, right? On top of what he and I will explore together in a BDSM dynamic, like in a DS context, like now there's even more doors that are open, right? So... I want us to understand that, number one, if you go through life with this idea that anyone wanting to have any, if anyone wanting to have sex with someone else while they're with you somehow makes your relationship invalid, that's a problem because, and and I'm going to tell you why, because Sex and intimacy are very different. And oftentimes when you're married and when you're in a, like a, a relationship that is emotionally sort of you're committed emotionally, that means that I want to come home to you. I want to come home and have a bubble bath with you. I want to come home and, 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 and sit in your fucking lap. Like, and for me in particular, I can have sex with maybe a lot of dudes, right? There are a lot of dudes that I find appealing that I could have sex with. But there aren't a lot of men that I would want to come home to. There aren't a lot of men that I would submit to. There aren't a lot of men that I would want to take a bubble bath with. That's just how that works, right? So I want us to understand that sex and intimacy are very different. And we've been taught to link them together. And that's not a thing. And there are some people that want to be emotionally committed to many people, right? And that's okay, too, to say, I want to get what I need from multiple sources, right? So the my friends, the people I particularly, like, sort of connect with and people I go to when I have issues, these people sort of think like me. So I have one friend who's in a relationship and his girlfriend has the ability to like have sort of men that she have sex with and and he knows about it and he's like it's good for when I don't want to be bothered shit like he's like I don't want to be bothered all the time like so he doesn't see it as somehow he's invalid or somehow he's not enough like he sees it as like sometimes I just don't feel like it so that's all good I'm glad that like the burden is sort of spread all over. And that's a great thing to have, to be honest, like, because I want you to understand that a lot of people feel trapped in relationships because this pressure to be everything that someone needs, first of all, it's illogical because we have contradictory needs. We need this source of stability and which we would call intimacy. And we also need this source of adventure and this source of, I don't know what's going to happen and uncertainty and mystery. Like, so there are a lot of things that we need that contradict themselves. And I'm going to do videos on that later to help you guys understand that like there are different needs right so you can be in your committed marriage and you're committed emotionally committed marriage and relationship and get your emotional stability and you also could be getting sort of your sense of excitement and adventure from other places and having sex with other people and I think that it's amazing to to look forward to this life that's well-rounded where you're getting everything you need I talked about this on my on my Instagram and this woman was like I don't understand why, like, you can't do everything with one person. And I was like, I don't, I'm confused as to why you don't understand. Like, to her, she's just like, I don't, like, you don't need, like, other people. And I'm just like, there was, there there was this, um, (laughs) there was, and this is where this started. There was a, what do you call it? There was a, um, there was a meme that said, if one nigga is amazing, imagine having five. And I was so happy that someone said it because it's just like, if you have this amazing connection, like, like I want you to understand that you're not limited to one person. That's what I want you to understand. So you know that gushy, amazing feeling you get when like your relationship is thriving with like this person you really love and really care about? You could have that with multiple people. You know, that's like, like, I feel like I'm giving you guys permission to even think about this idea that that's not against the rules. That's not illogical. Like you could have a life where you are involved with three people that adore you and you split your time between the two and you get to be happy and excited to see all three of them. That's a thing, right? But 
People have been taught that love means I need to control you. Love means jealousy and insecurity. Love means that I want to hold you hostage. And love is not any of that. Love is not insecure. Love is not jealous. Love literally just is and you envelop yourself in it. Love is literally fucking pure. It's so pure that it has no opposite. People say the opposite of love is a hate. No, no, no. Love has no opposite. Love stands alone. Like, love is why we exist. That's it. Love, love, love is why we exist, right? So... I want you to even start thinking about the idea that you can have as many people as you want, right? And and it's so funny because um the the girl her language was was manipulative and abusive because she said you're you're being greedy. And it's funny because people who were raised in religion but also people who had subtly abusive parents sort of parents that would say things like, well, you need to listen to me or you're going to get a disease or don't be lazy, do this. It's like they use language and we have certain associations with certain words to make you feel bad. So she said, it's, she said first of all, um, having no boundaries and being willing to sleep with anyone and everyone means like you're selfish and irresponsible. And so she was literally sort of wanting to make me feel bad for this idea of you can, you can, you can have a full life full of as much love as you can possibly handle to her that signaled that somehow I was irresponsible which is completely laughable because you think that because I want as much love and pleasure and as much great sex as humanly possible that I'm somehow irresponsible which is fascinating right so we associate having great and a lot of sex with with teenagers and we associate teenagers and young people and youth with sort of being irresponsible so that was very fascinating and she also said that um sort of being open to anything and everything which is interesting because anyone who knows me and seen my video on the type of men I like it is very clear that is not sort of anything and everything it's very clear that it, there's a very specific criteria and my needs are specific. Um, so that's what I mean by I could have sex with, with, with men that I find appealing and actually like their energy and like they're feminist as fuck. And I like that, like, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to go home with everyone. Like that doesn't mean that I want to really kind of take a bubble bath with everyone. So this idea that if you are open to a bunch of love and sex, that you are irresponsible in some way is completely laughable. And I mean, I have such a sort of, uh, barrier up against any sort of abuse that I could immediately tell by her language what she was attempting to do. So she called me irresponsible and and she called me, um, or anyone who wants to be involved with an open relationship or polyamory, she called it basically like irresponsible. And her ideas was, you're greedy if you want to have a bunch of sex with a bunch of people. Like, because I'm just like, if one nigga's amazing, imagine five. And my idea is, I want, and I want for everyone to literally have so much love and experience so much like passion that like you could fucking cry every day because your life is so full. You could cry every day because you have such amazing sex. You could cry every day from gratitude because like love surrounds you. You have people that you can depend on, people that you can trust. Your life is just fucking full, okay? Your life is this fucking bush and roses are everywhere and it's full, right? It's beautiful. And to her, she said that's being greedy because the way it works is you find one person and you 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 be okay with that. So if you're sort of going to enter, I want you guys to understand if you're going to entertain this idea of your life can be full of love and full of great sex and and great intimacy. If you feed into the idea that that makes you greedy or that makes you selfish in some way, I want you to know that that's wrong, period. You're not selfish for wanting as much love and sex and happiness and joy that the world could possibly give you. That's like, and I told her, I was like, it's funny because first of all, I'm certain that you were raised in religion that sort of uses terms to make you feel bad. Religion uses terms like sinner and they use, they use terms like heaven and hell. Like if you look at religion, it's so abusive <laughs> because it's like, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. So I, so I, so I, I need to sort of guilt you into doing what I want you to do. It's a form of manipulation. It's like, I can't even get into it, but I want you to understand people's language. And oftentimes they use language to get you to do things and make you feel guilty. And it's manipulation, period, point blank. It's unhealthy and it's, it doesn't fly with me. You got me fucked up. So her idea is that 
you find one person and be okay with one person. And I want to let you know that there are a lot of people who are in traditional relationships that are absolutely miserable because they feel trapped. They feel like there's so much more they could be experiencing. They feel like they're, they're not alive, right? So I watched this, this, this um, TED talk of this woman, and we're, you're going to hear a lot from her as I dive into this topic more. She basically said she talks to couples and where they have, there has been cheating. And she said that the people who cheat say they feel alive when they cheat, right? And that's fascinating because there are a lot of couples who are in relationships and I've, I've, I've been with these men, these sugar daddies. Right. And it's, it's interesting because they did everything right. Right. So they got married and had the kids and they did everything right, but they just feel like it's not enough. They feel dull. They feel like they're just going through the motions. Right. Because they feel like this is this is the extent of love you can receive. This is the extent of good sex you can receive. This is this is it. And personally, if I was in that case, if I was in that particular situation, I mean, how else do you expect someone to respond if there is an animal that you're keeping in this cage? And I want you to understand that this is a perceived cage. This is a cage that we as society have created. You can completely sort of choose for yourself if you're going to be in this box or not. If I was someone who was in this box and felt trapped, I would bang against the walls two and one out. Of course, that's that's normal. Like, that's absolutely normal. So when I meet these men who are just like, I'm fucking like miserable, dude, like I'm like, I can fucking imagine like I would be miserable, too. I want you guys before you get married to understand that like you get to choose. You don't have to be in a box. You can find people who think just like you. You can find people who understand that the fucking normal system is failing. So we need a new system, right? It's possible. It is out there. It is alive. Literally what you think you attract. So if you literally consume your mind with this idea of this great fucking love and these great people The universe has no choice but to fucking get on board because that's what manifestation looks like. And I can do a whole different shit on law of attraction and shit like that. But like you don't have to be in this box. Right. So there are people who are in marriages and who are miserable. And then they want to tell young people like marriage is hard. Yeah, it would be hard if um, you tried to set me up to live in a fucking prison. Like it would it would be hard, of course. Now. Her saying that this is greedy is the same logic of you only get a certain amount of love and and, and that's how much love this one person can give you. And I want you to understand that like, you ever felt pressured in a relationship to be everything in one? That's that's what I'm talking about. That's what we want to sort of combat and, 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 and avoid. And it's avoidable. So my friend who lets his girlfriend has like have like a side nigga, That's amazing because he's just like, sometimes I just ain't got time. Like, and it lifts up this burden from him to have to be everything, to always have an answer, to always sort of be emotionally available. I need you to understand that healthy humans, they actually take time for themselves. They come first. So in a relationship, I'm not always going to be emotionally available to you, period. Like, that's just even with like my YouTube career, even with like as a teacher, like I'm not always going to be emotionally available to anyone right? I get to shut down sometimes. And if I'm in a relationship with someone where I'm just having like a moment where I'm just like, Ooh, I got to chill. And my person kind of like has someone else that can give him what I can't in that moment. I want him to have this amazing love. Like love is not a prison. Love is not saying I want you to be held hostage. And like, because I'm insecure, that's what happens, right? So if your partner wants someone else or wants to find sort of comfort in in someone else it's like oh I'm not enough and and um and, and it comes from this place of insecurity it comes from this place of I already don't feel like enough so I'm going to sort of hold you hostage so you can be here to prove that I'm enough and if I can keep this relationship intact for 50 years as and and, and show that I'm the only one you've ever wanted to have sex with that means I'm enough that means I'm a great woman my, my womanhood is validated and that's what happens and that's a problem right that's a fucking problem because you're enough no matter what someone else has desire to do. You're enough. Like, that's okay. And the thing is, 
you should want someone to experience as much love as humanly possible. And there's so many ways to do this. So for example, I had a boyfriend and our thing was once a month, if we wanted to go have fun and go have sex with someone else and sort of whatever, like emotionally, I was good. We were both good. But if it was like we wanted to have sex with someone else, we could. If we had absolute permission, like the the deal was we don't sort of say anything about it, but we definitely have permission once a month to do our own thing. We never used it. And that's the thing. It's funny when you sort of if if you tell a kid not to touch that stove continuously, they're going to want to touch that stove. But if you say, all right, whatever, I don't care. It, it, it becomes less taboo. There's not really much adrenaline to it. So oftentimes people find themselves in these situations and just because they want the adrenaline rush of doing the wrong thing. And if you take it away and make it not wrong, because it's not wrong to want to have sex with multiple people at once. That's not wrong. Like whether in the same room or at once as in a period of time, that's not wrong. Right. And oftentimes, sometimes you just have to take the taboo off of something. And it's just like, eh, I, don't, I don't really want it. Eh. If somebody tell me you cannot at all for the life of you eat a whole box of Oreos, I'm just going to be like, the fuck? Now I want to eat Oreos. Now I'm mad. Give me these like, but if it's just like, do what you want. It's like, okay, well, mm, all right. And I want us to understand sort of monogamy and I want us to understand how it can be and, and, and has become sort of a... A place, a thing of validation, but in an unhealthy way. Like, it, it, like your relationship should validate you as in like, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm really a great lover, and I'm a great friend, and like, ooh, I'm really good at listening. Like, validate the things that like are are positive and healthy. Like, not I'm unhealthy as fuck, and I'm insecure, and I need you to always call me ten times a day to make sure that like you know you're still here, and I need to smother you because. Th- I'm sorry. I, first of all, I'm far too fucking busy for any of that. But like, I want us to understand that we can choose. But I also want us to understand that number. No, I keep saying number one, but sure. Number one, as far as cheating nowadays, it's it, it's so vast because of the Internet. The, the definition continues to change. So it could be emotional. It could be physical. It could be whatever. Right. And I want us to understand that if you create a relationship that has this atmosphere of such honesty and this atmosphere of, hey, my, my desire is not to be hold you as a prisoner. I'm confident in what we have. I'm confident and we've done the work and the universe has brought us together and I'm confident in you valuing our time in our relationship and I value our time in relationship. Everything else after that is totally like, hey, we could talk about it. Like, it's all good. And... You get to choose, right? So there's a scene in Sex and the City, and I can actually do like an analysis just on this scene, but there's a scene in Sex and the City where the gay couple, part two, the gay couple's getting married, and um, the, the, yeah, so the gay couple, Carrie's friend, is, they're, they're getting married, and one of the, the husbands say, he gets to have, he gets to decorate our house or something, and I get to cheat, and Charlotte was like, you can't cheat. That That's not how marriage works. And Carrie was like, people get to choose whatever they want. And everybody got sort of uncomfortable because the idea of being able to choose what marriage is, is like foreign. It's like, no, I'm sorry. If we have to be miserable with this one person, then um, you have to, too. And it's like, no, fuck you. I don't have to be miserable. Like, and it's, it's the same idea of when people are living this free life. Like oftentimes religious people want to make gay people feel bad because they're like, how dare you not live with guilt and shame when I live with so much guilt and shame? Like, how dare you? Like oftentimes the way we respond to other people, well, all the time, the way we respond to other people is a reflection of us and what we think and what we're going through. So You see a lot of people spewing sort of hate because they're like, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. And they get uncomfortable because they feel like what they've been taught is 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 they they're scared that it might be wrong. Number one, but it probably is wrong. (laughs) Like So I always sort of thought about that scene from Sex and the City. And then there's another scene in that same movie where Big sort of suggested that they spend time apart. And there are some psychologists that would suggest that healthy relationships literally are are thriving because of separation in a lot of cases, right? So um, I was watching Eat, Pray, Love, and, and the guy was like, you're not going to even give me a chance to miss you. And he was saying that she was 
that, that the girl Liz was there all the time, right? And I want us to understand, sort of start evaluating what makes like healthy relationships thrive and what makes them work. And to be honest, separation is actually a big thing. Kind of having a partner who sort of is involved in their own life, which is what relationships are, healthy relationships, two whole people coming together. So this idea of, I can't wait for my other half to show up. No, I'm, I don't, there's no other half to fuck. I'm the whole, like understand that there's no other half you're waiting for you are the fucking whole okay that like let's just jot that down right the fuck now you are the whole there's no other half no you're looking for someone to come and like coexist with you but no no but no 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 no. you're the whole you're good by yourself like you you living your best life by yourself you're not waiting for anything and that's the problem a lot of people are like oh i'm just waiting for it and then when it comes they get fucking clingy and attached because it's like, oh, my, now my life can begin. Now I can do all the things I want to do. Someone made a, I saw a post the other day, like the right person will have you saving money and, and eating right. And it's like, why can't you save money and eat right right now? I'm confused as to why you're waiting for a person. I'm lost. But we've been taught that, that like this relationship comes along and validates you and then everything's complete. And that's not the case. You're complete now, Right. And those are the toxic relationships and the unhealthy relationships where you expect someone to come along and pick up this burden of, 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 of completing you and telling you who you are and validating you and, and, and shifting your insecurities. That's not anyone else's responsibility. No one else is responsible for your insecurities. That is your problem to deal with, period. So your person doesn't need to call you 20 times a day so you don't feel insecure. Your person doesn't need to, to like, no, 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 no. Because all they're doing is keeping you unhealthy. All they're doing is keeping you in a place of absolute unhealthy, period, right? So there's another scene in Sex in the City where Big's like, let's, I mean, let's spend two days a a week apart. Like, that's good. Like, separation's good. And she's like, you want to get away from me? Like, she just starts having this whole fucking conniption. And like, it's just like, dude, separation, like, it doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean that I don't want to, like, be with you. It just means that I actually value my time alone. Like I actually, but for her, she's like, what will my friends say? And that's a fucking problem because a lot of you are concerned about what your family will say. A lot of you are concerned about what your friends will say. And, and, oh my God, what would my mom say if she knew that like my boyfriend had, had a girlfriend on the side or if she knew I had two boyfriends and that's how, like, don't like, that's your fucking problem. Caring about what other people will say is a part of your fucking problem. Okay. You get to exist on your own. You get to do the research. You get to fucking read the books. You get to look at the fucking evidence. And then you get to decide, I, this is how it works for me. This is what works for me. You get to choose, right? So in relationships, separation is actually a really good thing because being too fucking close all the time it's a problem. Like it's, it's smothering. It's, 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 it's too fucking much period. And for some people, that's what we have to understand. Some people actually need their space. I'm an introvert, right? Contrary to popular belief. And, but I am absolutely the introvert. Like literally my social life has a battery life. Like, I mean, I really, after like a long day, of like being out and and interacting or even on social media if I'm responding to a bunch of comments and giving people advice like there's a point in which I have to shut down and recharge and I do that in silence or by myself right so if someone's in the room they got to be quiet because I, I can't like you have to let me do my own thing and leave me alone it doesn't mean that I don't love any it doesn't mean that I don't love you or it doesn't mean that this is a reflection of you like no 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 this is for me like this is for me in order to literally love someone else, you can't give what you don't have. So literally, if you don't understand the concept of putting you first and loving you first, you cannot love someone else. And I understand the idea of self-love is fucking hard because no one teaches you how to do it. Our parents don't fucking teach us how to love ourselves. They don't. They don't at all. They don't teach us how to be in relationships. They, they don't. There's no like course on that. There's no course on how to deal with breakups. Like, no, no, no. We need practical fucking ways to live. I want you to understand. And I'm going to do another podcast on this probably after this, that your parents literally fucking teach you how to depend on other people for what you need. So you literally are just like, OK, tell me what to do and tell me what to do and tell me what to do. Then you get to college and it's like, oh, you have some say. And it's like, what the fuck? Do I do? And a lot of you are studying fucking majors that you don't want to study because your parents told you to. And a lot of you are still trying to find your fucking way. And then you get out of college and you move into your own place and you live. And it's like, I don't know who the fuck I am. And a lot of us are in that space. And it's a hard space to be in because it's like, who the fuck am I? Like, oh, my God. And it's because you literally you literally have been raised to be like, 
you do this and you do that and you do this and you do that and, and from the way you dress to what you eat to like and it's just like yes that's good parenting sort of absolute and utter control and not letting kids have a say and it's like you don't like the piano I don't give a fuck you gonna play this piano and it's like okay the fuck like mm. so a lot of people get out of fucking school and they're like who the fuck am I and they have this whole crisis but you know what a lot of other people do who are divorced by the time they're fucking 50 like if they last that long they jump right into a relationship where someone else can validate them and tell them who they are and and it's like oh yes okay cool another person telling me what to do because this is what I'm used to I need someone telling me what to do I need someone telling me how to like live this life like I need it this is what I'm used to right but the people who are doing the fucking work who are like no I'm gonna figure this shit out and I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna understand and do the work and sort of be interested in growing and and fucking go to therapy and deal with my mental health issues and and love me first Because that's what love really is. For people who want to be married and want to be in these great healthy relationships, the best thing you can do is literally make sure that you are as healthy and as whole as possible before they get here. That is the best thing you can possibly do. Knowing who you are up until this point because you'll never know fully because you you sometimes you don't know what the fuck you need until it comes and that has happened to me a lot. Sometimes you don't know who you are until someone comes along and they're just like, hmm, okay and that's the beautiful thing about life like you're gonna learn more you're gonna grow more it's gonna be sort of really fucking like great and and you're gonna learn new things every day like that's the great thing but your job is to understand how the past has affected your right now how your your parents fucking issues and their divorce and your dad's abusive behavior toward your mom has affected you right now how your personal abuse and and you having grown up being fucking manipulated and abused by religion and by sort of overbearing parents like your job is to heal from that as much as possible and to be literally and to understand that your life is whole as fuck as you are now right And then when that person come and when your people come, you can love them the best you can while you're still growing, while you're still like having a good time. But your job is to be as whole as humanly possible right now. Right. So I want us to understand that oftentimes the norms in which we see in relationships really come from this place of insecurity they come from this place of systems that no longer work for us we need a new model period like it, if divorce rates over 50 percent, it's not working that's it that's that, like that's the end of the story there's no more period it's not working like right there like you get married you literally have more of a chance of breaking up than being together and i'm certain it's because we don't know who we are and we're, we, we think we're not whole until we find a relationship and, and it's like no like and and there's a TED talk and I'm going to literally do podcasts on this of this guy saying you will most likely marry the wrong person. He's going to he tells you why in the video. He's fucking brilliant and it's incredible. And it's something that literally we need to understand. It's something that we need to listen to and something that we really need to debunk, like something that we really need to dive into. This is why people who are emotionally unavailable and constipated are dangerous because they don't know who they are, what they want, what they need. If you're not willing to do that work and think that think like that, that's a problem because I can't trust that you know what you need. Like, I can't trust that you can choose being with me on a long term basis because you literally have no idea who you are. And the crazy thing is I've met married men who literally like had no idea who they were and they got married because it was the right thing to do. And then they ended up divorced because they're like. It turns out I'm not with that shit, especially when I meet men who are actually doms and subs who marry sort of vanilla, normal women, traditional women. And they're like, oh, no, actually, mm -mm. I definitely need a a, a BDSM lifestyle. This is not going to work for me. I want you to understand you can do that work now. Like, have great sex. Like, have as many experiences as you possibly fucking can. Travel as much as you can. And when you get married, of course, you can travel then. But, like, travel on your own for now. Go to a different country, get tender and, and just get a bunch of foreign dick. Like, have a good time, like have a great time and everything you need, everything you want will just come into your experience so seamlessly and life will just flow. It'll be this continuous sort of a flow like and that's what it's about. So I want you to understand that you can have as much love as you can possibly sustain and handle till your fucking heart is full that's possible 
it's completely possible. It's not illogical. It's not unethical. Like if you look up ethical non-monogamy, there's so many articles written on it because it's about honesty. It's about openness. It's about communication, all these fucking great things. And it's funny because a lot of people talk about BDSM relationships and how vanilla people can benefit from like the open communication and BDSM relationships. There In a BDSM relationship, there are actually like contracts involved. And for vanilla people, that's like, what the fuck? But you know what happens in the contract? Your rule the roles are clearly defined so literally no one's stuck doing something they don't want to do no one's stuck being unhappy literally that's someone agreeing to adhering to certain rules like that's someone agreeing to this is what I'm, I'm committing to you so in a BDSM relationship like being like physically married is like it's not the same in a BDSM context because once you're collared and being collared means like it means like that's your like that's your submissive like that's your like dom like like that's you're in that that's like the equivalent of marriage like and signing a contract is like that's like the equivalent so like and 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 what it takes to sort of navigate a BDSM relationship takes open communication it takes open communication it takes fucking like like shutting down in a BDSM relationship is like the worst thing you could possibly do because the relationship is high maintenance. It cannot be maintained without communication. For a lot of you, you go months without talking to your partner. You know couples who go years literally without fucking talking. They sleep in the same bed and they don't talk and you act like that's normal. That's not normal. So I love BDSM relationships because they are, there's this built in sort of fucking not talking, not communicating, not being honest does not work. Sorry. Like, something's off if these things aren't happening. And there's just this higher level of communication. There's this higher level of, I know what's expected of me. So literally, if you have a contract with your dom, with your person, and some people are like, oh my God, a contract. Like, uh, I personally get fucking wet and aroused thinking about the idea of a contract because I'm just like, oh my God, yes, daddy, tell me what you're going to do, please. Oh my God. Like, I fucking love, you don't understand. I love a man who's just like, that's nice. We going to fucking put this shit in order. Like, because I mean, I'm organized as far as like what I need to do, but like, in essence, I'm just like, whatever, free for fucking all. So, like, to have, like, a daddy dom in my life who's just like, that's nice. We gonna have fucking order up in this house. I'm just like, oh, my God, yes. Mm. Like, I love that shit. Like, it just compliments me perfectly. So, the idea of the contract is uncomfortable for some people because they're just like, what the fuck? But a lot of you would actually be happier, like, if your person said, this is what's acceptable from me. And this is what I'm willing to do. This is what I'm committing to do. This is what this is. This is like, if it was clearly sort of drawn out, there would be less a passive aggressive couples. There would be less couples who hate each other. There would be less couples who aren't getting what they need, but can't say it because what you need is in fucking writing, right? Like what you need is written down so I can go back to it. Like, remember you said that you were going to do this. Um, we wrote that down, right? Okay, cool. You didn't like, that's actually great communication like and there I I just watched a talk sort of and I can put the link below talking about how vanilla couples and traditional couples can benefit from the way in which BDSM couples maintain their relationship BDSM relationships are high maintenance as fuck I mean there's a continuous sort of negotiation and it's funny because after a BDSM session or or BDSM sort of like sex it's normal for your dom to sort of say like it's normal for you to talk about it. Like I had a dom who made me like write down sort of what I like, what I loved about every session and really sort of dive into it. And the parts that made me uncomfortable, the parts that made me happy, what it was like to be in subspace. Like, like if a lot of normal people and normal couples did that after sex, they would have a better sex life. But in traditional relationships, it's just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll pretend I like the sex that we're having and I don't. Like, I'll pretend, you know, because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and I have issues being honest and, you know, I don't. And and I, I promise you, if a lot of you were to actually sort of like talk about your sex more openly when it's done, you would actually be more fulfilled. In a BDSM context, it's normal for your dom to be like, okay, what was, what about that did you like? Okay, what, how did I push your limits too far? How did I, whatever. So, My goal is to help us understand that there are hundreds of different dynamics you can have. There are hundreds of ways to navigate your relationship. And that's the beautiful fucking thing. There are different cultures who do it differently. There's a fucking culture in Asia where fucking they would, you could have sex with anybody. 
And the responsibility of the baby is on the family, on the, 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 the mother's family. Like the woman who got pregnant, that's like, like the family takes care of that. You don't need a fucking father. Fuck like, like literally. So there are cultures who literally do it in different ways. Like there are so many places in this fucking world and in different dynamics. Like if you look up non-traditional relationships, you'll find so many And I want us to understand that there are so many options for us. We're not stuck in some box. We're not stuck just sort of in this one place. There are so many options for us. There are so many amazing sort of ways we can go and we can pick what we want. There's imagine a fucking garden with trees of every fucking sort. Okay, there's apple trees and like you can pick oranges from the trees. You get to pick and choose like what you like, what you don't like, like. That's actually a thing. You get to say what you like and what you don't like. You get to choose. And I want you to understand that you get to choose. It is absolutely your fucking right to choose, right? And for some people, you just need someone to sort of give you the ideas. Like, like you, you when it comes to fashion, like, you gotta look at all the styles of each culture and be like, oh shit, I wanna pick that, I want that hat. I, ooh, I like how they do that. Okay, I want that, I want that. It's like eating food. You go to you go to Italy and eat their food. You go to Spain and eat their food. You you are in America, eat their food. Like and it's like, oh, I like this. I like that. You get to pick, and then you go to your house and then you make a recipe book of all the types of food you want, and it's blended with food from France and it's blended with with food from Italy. It's blended with this and that. That's the fucking beauty of it. There is no one way to do this, and I want us to understand that. Okay. once we get over our insecurities, once we try to stop making people responsible for how we feel and responsible for our insecurities, once we get to that point where you realize you're fucking whole and and, and, and the people that you want, they exist already. So, like, let's just say that the people that you want, the type of people that you want to be involved with, they exist already. So, like, it's 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 just waiting for you to be ready for it, like for you to reach that next level of enlightenment. Like, it's just it's just waiting. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I've brought up a lot of things and let me know in the comments sort of if anything resonates with you and you can absolutely let me know what you would like me to sort of further dive into but this is going to be a very long sort of discussion so you guys are in this for the long haul and we are really going to dive deep into this um and I'm I my goal is to just present you with the options my goal is also to show you the ways in which you sort of been conditioned because you like if you can understand your brainwashing then you can kind of be like okay that is that actually isn't true like that actually isn't a fact because a lot of things we've been fed as fact aren't fact you have to understand that a child's brain absorbs everything so there are ideas that we hold that have been literally instilled in us unconsciously from childhood from adolescence that we just can't let go of and we understand we don't understand why we're uncomfortable we don't understand why it's just not sitting right with us. Like we, like we don't get it. Literally, it's like me when I was trying to date normal, traditional men. I was uncomfortable. I did not. I just did not relate to them. I like, like I just, I just could not like relate to them. Like, and it wasn't until I met like my first dom where I was like, oh shit, this is why I don't relate to normal men. Like, I need to be in a relationship that requires like that we're open and honest and we're just keeping real like like I know what I need as far as that so I want us to get to a place where we know what we need okay I love you guys and I hope that this was helpful (laughs) and yeah I will speak to you guys in the next one bye thank you guys so much for tuning into this podcast don't forget to subscribe for more